Alright, after a long trip down TikTok lane, we are back and ready to record. Another Tack Tuesday episode. What is it, like a week and a half late? I don't know. Whoops! Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Tack Tuesday. Today we're going to be talking all about anatomical bridles and kind of figuring out if the hype behind them is warranted and if they actually have research and studies to back up the claims that many of these bridles have made and have used in their marketing and advertisement. Most of us have, you know, purchased gear at some point in our lives and have then looked to another piece of tack to improve its effects on our horses. So, you know, how you start off with a very bottom of the line saddle, eventually you'll purchase a nicer saddle that fits you and your horse better to improve both your horse's performance as well as yours. A lot of times we're looking at different pieces of tack that work in tandem with the horse's anatomy rather than against it, and that's kind of the logic behind the anatomical bridles, is some time ago people started to realize that standard bridles actually put a lot of pressure on the sensitive nerves and myofascial lines in our horse's faces, and that if you could design a bridle that avoided that, you could improve the horse's welfare as well as their performance and reduce pressure points on their faces. Anatomical bridles are designed with the idea of reducing pull pressure, reducing pitching of the ears, avoiding sensitive nerves on the horse's face, sensitive myofascial tissue, as well as helping improve the horse's performance. And the mention of myofascial lines in the horse's face is actually pretty significant because it was discovered by a Danish researcher that and scientist that myofascial lines traced in the head actually ran throughout the entire horse's body into their hooves. Which just kind of goes to show that like what we're doing up on the horse's head, the brows that we're using, aren't an isolated action on the horse. That, so like what we're doing on their heads affecting their entire body. An ill-fitting bridle can 100% affect what's going on in your horse's limbs and like how they move. Which I think is really interesting and just kind of pushes along the idea of the need for a change in our bridles. For instance, did you know that like one of the reasons why horses will itch their head or rub their head on their leg when they're wearing a bridle is because standard bridles put pressure on their sensitive nerves and actually create a numb sensation in the horse's face. And so they're rubbing their heads on their legs as I'm trying to like get rid of that feeling, get rid of that numb sensation. Which, to me, that's really sad. I mean, how many times growing up were you told to like scold the horse and not let them itch their face when they weren't actually being disrespectful or naughty, they were just trying to like get rid of the sensation that we cause in their body by using ill-fitting tap or poor-fitting bridles. Which, this just seems to indicate further a need for a change in our bridles design and the style from the standard bridles, which is where this idea of the anatomical bridle came from, is that it would be more humane. Beneficial to a horse's welfare, rather than the negative effects that standard bridles were having on our horses. And it's crazy, because if you look at the market now, there are so many brands out there. I mean, you have PS of Sweden, Miklum, Stockholm, Collegiate Comfy Tech, you got HDR, Pro Anatomical, Quantum Bridle, Stupid Freedom Bridle, and even to some extent, like, Fairfax's Bridles. There's so many brands out there, which begs the question, you know, how many are actually doing research behind their products, and how many are just doing a quick cash grab trying to profit off of our interests of trying to improve a horse's health and welfare, you know, how many are just trying to take advantage of that style of the market. But I think the first anatomical bridle I really remember seeing come across the market was the <laughs> Niklo. And this was actually the one that I bought like six years ago because I saw top riders using it and one of the horses I was going to was using it and all the vendors were selling it and for me back then that was enough. I was sold. You know, if I saw it enough I was like, yep, might as well do what everyone's claiming it does. And now when I actually look at the Miklum Bridal, I'm starting to realize that a lot of claims that I've attributed to it of, you know, reducing pull pressure, reducing pinching of the ears, Miklum actually hasn't made those claims. In fact, when I read through Miklum's ad on the website, it reads as such. The Rambo Miklum bridle is designed to comfortably fit the shape of the horse's skull, avoiding putting pressure on sensitive areas in your horse's face. Exclusive to Horsewear Island, both Miklum multi-bridle and competition bridle feature the unique noseband and back straps that make this bridle more humane than the conventional bridle. Which is interesting because if you read their ad, really the only thing they mention in it that other anatomical bridles claim is avoiding sensitive areas on the face. But they don't mention what areas. They don't mention if it's avoiding sensitive tissue, if it's avoiding sensitive nerve bundles. They don't really mention any of that. They also don't claim anything about reducing pull pressure, anything about reducing pinching of the ears. They just claim a more humane design where the straps fall and that they avoid sensitive tissue. I took it a step further and went and looked at their patent. And their patent was 
was published back in 2009 by William Richard Micklow. And I was kind of shocked and surprised, but their patent doesn't mention anything about why they created this design. It doesn't mention research behind it or make any other claims. In fact, their patent is actually only one sentence long, which is, I claim the ornamental design of the bridal as shown. That's it. In fact, I was surprised when I found out that other brands of their anatomical bridles actually have the exact same patent, just with their own design and picture shown, but the language is the exact same, and it's the exact same singular sentence. Nowhere was there reference to why they created this design or the logic behind it, which in hindsight, you know, patents don't require you to explain your research. Patents don't require the logic behind the design. In reality, the patent, you're just claiming the design itself, not the why behind the design. But it still kind of frustrates me that in their advertisement and in their patent, they actually don't make any reference to research. When I started thinking about it, all I remember from 10 years ago was that Rambo showed a handful of YouTube videos where they had a vet look at the bridle and the anatomy of the horse and say, yes, it was avoiding these points. But they never actually showed this bridle in use compared to a standard bridle and had any research that indicated that there was actually an improvement in our horse's welfare between the two different style of bridles. The frustrating thing is I found a study that actually talks about Miklum versus standard bridles. But that study didn't come out until 2019. That study wasn't done until last year. Do you know how many versions of these bridles have been on the market for the last 10 years? How many of these bridles they have sold? How many brands have come out with their own version? And it's not until 10 years after they have profited off of us and our interest for our horses' welfare that they actually have done studies about their bridles, that there's actually anything that looks at them in comparison to a standard bridle to prove that they actually are for the welfare of our horse. How come it took 10 years after we all purchased this type of bridle for there to be research to come out about it? Like, I am so frustrated with that. I don't know if I'm out of line being frustrated with that, but I'm frustrated with that. Especially now looking at my tack, it's like, how many other things have I purchased with this idea in mind that it actually does something that they never claim to do, that I've just kind of heard word of mouth and attributed to their product? The first study that really came out that looked and compared a Micklin bridle to a standard bridle didn't happen until 2019. And they compared this bridle to a regular standard bridle with a flash on it. Some have complained that the comparison is kind of unjust, but I actually think it's totally fine and warranted because if you look at the noseband of a Micklin bridle, the noseband actually mimics several features on the flash noseband or a drop noseband. So I think comparing it to a standard flash is completely fine. But what this study was looking at is they compared two bridles on nine different horses where they recorded the rein tension and the horse's behavior. The behavior they were looking at was correct head carriage, which was essentially the horse carrying themselves on a vertical, and how often the horse put their ears forward. What they found was that the horse showed a significant increase in time spent with the correct head carriage in the Micklin bridle as opposed to the conventional bridle, and horses were also found to spend significantly more time with their ears pricked forward, which is commonly seen as a positive behavioral sign. As far as the study goes, that's where they stopped looking. Like, that was all they were able to record. They did note that there were several other behavioral trends that emerged that were in support of the Micklin bridle, but they weren't statistically significant enough to actually weigh in the bridle's favor or not. So, as far as like studies go, with the exclusion of measuring rain tension, it feels like I could have done this study on my own. It feels like I totally could have conducted this and gotten similar results. And like as far, it just felt so superficial. I feel like they really skimmed barely the surface of this bridle and didn't really look any deeper into it to see other benefits or pros this bridle is having on our horses. Like, I'm, I'm frustrated with that, you know? And I understand that the companies out there could have privately done research that is just company knowledge that is not public records. But at the same time, like 10 years after the patent has come out, feels like some of this research should be, if it existed, be made public. So like, I'm, I'm frustrated on that behalf and that Rambo and Miklo have profited off of so many sales and yet they still haven't put any of that towards research. And I guess like, why would they? If they haven't needed research to make the sales in the past, why would they put money towards the research now? But to like dial it all back, calm down, get away from Miklum, and start looking at other brands out there on the market because there are so many others, it feels like there should be so much more research to back them up or support them. The sad truth is that I could actually only find two other studies that looked at a standard bridle compared to a bridle specifically designed to improve the horse's welfare or avoid like peak pressure points. In fact, like all the other studies out there that are looking at bridles are really only comparing bitted bridles to bitless, which is not exactly what I was looking at at this time. 
So the first study I want to take a look at was actually conducted back in 2015 in conjunction with Fairfax. And it was the first study of its kind to look at the pressure that is created by standard bridles and compare it to a bridle they intentionally created to avoid causing those pressure points. And they looked, they had three goals when they were conducting this study. I think it is worth mentioning though, before we get into it, that Vanessa Fairfax was involved with this study. I couldn't tell to what extent, but when I was looking through the results and how they conducted it, I think the study is totally fair and that the results are warranted. I don't think anything was really overly biased or pushed directly to support the Fairfax bridles because I think what they found in the study can be applied to like pretty much all the other anatomical bridles out there and many other brands of bridles. Like it wasn't specifically just for Fairfax, but Fairfax was willing to fund the research. That's kind of like what I took away from it. But I can also be totally wrong. I don't think I am, but you know, eh, stranger things have happened. <laughs> this study was conducted back in 2015 and they had three goals with it. They wanted to determine sites of maximum pressure under a double bridle headpiece and under the crank cavasson noseband when the horse was trotting. Their second goal was to design a headpiece and noseband that avoids maximal pressure locations during movement. And their third goal was to compare the maximum pressure and gait characteristics of the horse wearing the design bridle, which they refer to as bridle F, versus the usual bridle, the standard bridle, which is referred to as bridle S. So their idea was to measure with pressure mats what was going on, which bridles caused the most pressure, and if they could actually create a bridle that avoided causing that pressure and distributed it better. What they found through the pressure mats was that the peak pressure of bridle S in the crown piece was 106.7% greater than bridle F. The maximum force exerted by bridle S was 59.7% greater than bridle F. That's pretty significant. They also noted at this time that when those peak pressure points were happening between bridle S and bridle F, there was actually a significant change in the horse's gait. So when there was less pressure being exerted on the horse's face, the horse had a greater forelimb extension as well as flexion in their hocks by I think it was like 11%. So it was pretty significant change in how the horse was moving when the bridle was acting differently on their face. And when they looked at the pressure mats underneath the noseband, they found that bridal S was 47.8% greater peak pressure points than bridal F, and the maximum force exerted by bridal S was 41.2% greater than that of F, which is really interesting. So they're like, their final thought on it was that the reduction of pressure from the bridle had significant difference in improvement of the range of movement, extension, and flexion in the horse. And I know Fairfax bridles don't really look like what we traditionally think of with anatomical bridles, but I still think they're totally worth mentioning and noting because they started showing how much our bridles affected the rest of our horse, as well as looking at the amount of pressure a normal bridle is causing on a horse's face, just in comparison to really any bridle that's making an effort to avoid causing that pressure. The study that I'm going to mention is actually super recent. It wasn't published until June of 2020, which for those of you that know what day it is, that's like yesterday in the grand scheme of things with research and everything. Like June. If I had done this video eight months ago, I would not have this study to reference, which is crazy. And it just goes to show that like things are constantly developing and coming into light in the horse world, but like research is actually done and things are coming out about different products that we're using. So this study was published in June 2020, and their goal was to use acoustic myography to test two commercially anatomical designed fitted bridles have a measurable and positive effect on both equine muscle function and performance. They specifically looked at the number of transient contractions within two big muscles in the horse. The two big muscles they were looking at was the brachiocephalicus and the splenius. The reason they were looking at these two muscles in particular was because these two muscles are responsible for the head and neck movement of the horse. And when we look at bridles, while we're told to ride the horse back to front and to ride their shoulders, what bridles are really doing is controlling the head and neck movement. So it's imperative when you look at a bridle, to look at the muscles that they're controlling and like how they're affecting them. The kind of their scientific definition of the two muscles they're looking at, the brachiocephalicus is lateral flexion of the head and or extension of the shoulder joint and elbow. And the splenius, when contracted unilaterally, draws the head to the side and when contracted bilaterally, it extends and raises the head and neck. These two muscles are also selected because they are noted to be, make up part of the myofascial kinetic line. And as we mentioned earlier, we know bridles sit along these lines and are connected throughout the entire horse's body. So the mention of these muscle groups being connected to that is actually pretty significant. So the bridles that they were comparing was the Quantum Anatomical Bridle, the Finesse Anatomical Bridle, and a Standard Bridle. 
What they found was that when an anatomical bridle was used, there are fewer transient powerful contractions. So the contractions they were looking at were contractions of these big muscles. And think of when you feel pain or discomfort, how you flex your muscles or you tighten everything in your body because you're trying to reduce the pain, like you're trying to protect yourself and your body. That's the kind of muscle contractions they were looking at. They defined them as indicators of a sudden spontaneous involuntary muscle contraction of a powerful nature, yet of a short duration. The number of these spikes per horse was noted for both muscles during the duration of the exercise protocol, and they deemed them to be indicative of signs of discomfort or pain, which were different in their shape and duration from those voluntary contractions observed as a result of fly irritation. So they looked at muscle contractions that a horse did when they're irritated by a fly, kind of twitching that fly off their skin, in comparison to the contractions that were happening in the muscles when they were being ridden in the bridles, and they're able to realize that the contractions they were looking at were specific to when the horse was feeling discomfort or pain. I have to let them move. The sun has shifted. Can you see me still? Actually, I'll just move this way. I have to move out of the sunlight. Goodness gracious. All right. So what they found was that the quantum bridle has significantly less muscle contractions than the standard bridle in all three gates. So the walk, trot, and canter, the quantum bridle reduced those muscle contractions that indicated discomfort or pain significantly no matter what gait the horse was in. The finesse anatomical bridle has significantly less muscle contractions than the standard bridle in the canter, but appear to be relatively similar at the walk and trot. So where the quantum bridle has a very unique and different design from the finesse, you can see where the differences are occurring. The finesse had a big difference in the canter, but the walk and trot it really wasn't making a difference in comparison to the standard bridle, whereas the design of the quantum anatomical bridle was making a big difference in all three gates of the horse. They concluded that it reveals that bridles have been designed to fit with comfort, have a beneficial effect on muscles function when testing using identical exercise protocol or in a saddle rider as compared to a standard bridle. Any bridle that is making an effort towards an anatomical design will reduce pressure that a standard bridle creates on the horse's nerve and myofascial lines in their face. So even the McLean bridle is going to be reducing that pressure. However, I think there's better options out there. And the two bridles that I would actually recommend if you're going to buy an anatomical bridle, and these are the two that I would end up purchasing myself, hopefully one day I'll get the money again to actually buy one of these, but the bridles that I would look at purchasing would either be the Quantum Anatomical Bridle or the Steuben Freedom Bridle. I actually would prefer the Steuben Freedom Bridle over the Quantum just because I personally like the Steuben's crown piece better. I think it leans more towards free movement of the ears than even the Quantum's crown piece does. However, I really like their unique design, and they appear to be the only two anatomical bridles out there on the market that have this style of design that really goes wide around the eyes and avoids the horse's TMJ as well as their trigeminal nerve. So these are really the only two styles and designs of bridles out there that are actually avoiding these areas. For me, the Miklum seems to actually still run relatively close to those areas, and I feel like could be putting pressure on nerves and sensitive tissue more than those other designs. But don't get me wrong, the make one is still doing better than standard. However, the one caveat I have with PSF Sweden, Stockholm, the Collegiate, the, even the Miklum, is I'm not a huge fan of their nose band. Because the nose band that they have, whether it's a wide band or really thin as some of the PSF Sweden's, it goes right underneath the sensitive tissue of the horse's chin. And if you look at the anatomy of a horse, those nerves and sensitive tissues are a lot closer to the surface and have a lot less in between them to protect themselves from the pressure created by those straps. Whereas if you look at the Steuben or the Quantum Bridle, their noseband cavus on straps go more around the horse's jaw and are using an area that has a lot more in between it and the sensitive tissue and nerves. So there's a lot more to protect those sensitive areas and reduce pressure points being caused by our bridles. I'm also not a fan that these nosebands mimic effects of a flash or a drop, not necessarily to the same extent as a standard one, but they still kind of mimic those effects. And also, the Steuben Freedom Bridle is sold with the flash. I personally wouldn't purchase it with the flash, and I wouldn't use it with the flash, but I think they probably have the best design out there that is gonna have the greatest results and greatest changes away from our standard bridle designs. But at the end of the day, there is a huge lack of research behind these products that are advertised for horses' welfare, and I think that needs to change. I'm sure this video is super crazy long and very technical and many probably did not listen all the way through it because it was probably boring if you don't really care. But if you did stick all the way through to the end with me, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, hit subscribe. And if you guys are interested in checking out my podcast, it's called Mud Studs and Skullcaps. It's available all over the place. 
My sister and I have recently done some really interesting episodes on it. One of the latest ones we did was looking into the palms, the questioning earplugs that we use on our horses, figuring out that they're not actually designed to block sound. They use pressure points, which is super interesting. So if you guys are interested in that, go check it out. We also looked at a product that advertises itself to improve the horse's brain waves. So check it out. Let me know what you think, and I will see you guys next time. I don't know why I'm doing so many finger guns. Hopefully you don't feel threatened. Kapow! That was weird. I apologize for that. Mm -hmm.